Welcome, it's a great day to be a miner. In today's video, we have an awesome new piece of hardware to review. We have the Sapphire Pulse RX 6600 XT graphics card. We're gonna unbox it, we're gonna review it, we're gonna talk about the specs, and then of course, we're gonna get it mining, and then we're gonna go over all the nerdy numbers. Without further ado, let's spin that intro. Pew! Welcome! Today we have an exciting new item. This is the RX 6600 XT Sapphire Pulse Edition. We're going to tear this thing open, we're going to talk about the specs, we're going to go over the features, and then of course we're going to put it to the test. We're going to put it in our test bench, we're going to check out all the nerdy numbers, we're going to run it through its rounds, then of course we're going to get it mining and we're going to talk about the profitability. So let's quit wasting time and let's get into it. All right, specs. This is the RX 6700 XT. It is built off of the RDNA 2 architecture. This card comes with eight gigabytes of DDR6 memory and runs on a 128-bit bus. This card packs in 2048 stream processors. It boasts a game clock of 2382 megahertz and a boost clock of a whopping 2593 megahertz. The measurements on this thing are 240 millimeter by 120 by 45 millimeter. It is actually a 2.2 slot card, which essentially is a dual slot card with a little bit of extra sticking up. This runs off of a TDP of 170 watts and it has a suggested power supply from the manufacturer of 500 watt minimum. To power this, it runs off of a single eight pin. So features, this card and all RX 6600 XTs boast amazing 1080p gaming performance. At least that is what AMD is telling us and that is the key selling point to this series of graphics card. This specific card boasts oversized dual X cooling with a beefy cooler. It has a blow through metal back plate. The IO panel is a standard 1 HDMI 3 display port IO panel. It comes in at an MSRP of $380. I actually picked this specific card up on a combo through Newegg with a micro ATX board for $499 plus tax. Of course, I got this last week. These prices have already moved up. For all intents and purposes, the 6600 original MSRP prices on these AIBs probably are not going to be the prices anymore as they were put out for an initial price to get the masses and to get the people buying up this card and as a direct competitor against the RTX 3060. But with those prices coming up, I'm not so sure it's gonna be right there in the same ballpark anymore. Let's go ahead and do an unboxing on this thing. I'm itching to get this open. It looks so pretty in the pictures, so let's do it. Well, it's time for an unboxing and you know what that means. RGB knife, engage. All right, let's see what's in the box. The box is pretty stylish for, it's so cute though. Look how small this thing is. This box is pretty, tiny, pretty cute. So let's go ahead and cut this here seal and let's dig into this. This is the Sapphire RX 6600 XT. Let's see what you got in the box. Sapphire has always had a bit of a different boxing system than the other manufacturers. So let's take a look, see the interior brown box. I don't believe any of the other companies actually do this. So let's take a look. Let's open it. Oh, kind of, kind of disappointing, kind of plain. Okay, so there is our install. So there was uh, was our install document and our manufacturer warranty card. And let's take a look at the. See, they always have just a plain, just kind of plain packing box inside with a nice design box on the outside. And let's take a look at this car. It is so much lighter than some of my other cards. All right, so let's take a look inside of the package. Ah, that new graphics card smell. Love that new smell. Man, this thing just, it feels so light and 
so small. Still got the beautiful plastic on it. That means we get to do the peel. There's the front. Let's take a look at our nice metal back plating right there with the cool little Pulse logo across the back. And of course it has the nice little translucent blue caps that are known for Sapphire. The cooler looks pretty nice. It looks like it's gonna handle the PCB ends right here. And so you got this much of blow through. And of course with these oversized fans, it's gonna work really, I, I, there's no way that this card will get hot. Um, especially since it has a lower power requirement. So let's go ahead and do the satisfying peel. All right, it's time for the satisfying peel. Nice and slow. Let's get a good angle. Yeah, right, right there. Come on. Oh. Ah, that was nice. That was nice. So let's take a look. Let's see if this thing is new. Of course it's new. Oh yeah, that's a good card. That's a good solid card right there. So the, the shroud, it's plastic of course, but it isn't flimsy feeling. It has a, a different design on the end here, which looks like a little bit of a blow through, but I'm not sure if that's just, that's probably just for stylish designs. Um, the fans, as you can see, are quite nice. They are very much oversized. And of course, the blow through design on the end of the plate. And the big highlight on this thing is the beautiful metal back plate on it with the blow through. Um, besides that, there's not too much else to discuss. This has a nice single eight pin design. And there's our card. So here's our card. We got it all unboxed. We got the plastic off. So we're gonna get this thing into the test bench. We're gonna overclock it. We're gonna see how efficient this truly is because supposedly this is the new efficiency king. However, almost all of the people that are touting this as the efficiency king are talking about what it reads in the software and what it reads in the software and what it reads at the wall are two different things. I'm not doubting this is gonna be super efficient, but I am doubting that it is the number one efficient card. All right, so here we are. We're over in our remote session. We've got our card installed. Everything is at stock. We did use some utilities. We have Hardware Info 64 up. We have installed the latest driver, Adrenaline 2020 21.8.2. We also installed nice hash and we're going to go through nice hash and we're going to use a bunch of the algorithms on there just to get a baseline of our benchmarks and then on stock and then we'll go in and fine tune them. So then we're going to go in and we're going to get our max hash rates and we're going to get our most efficient and then we're going to take the most efficient and we're going to plug them into whattomine.com and we're going to try to get some profitability and ROI. Let's go. All right, all right, our testing for stock settings are finally finished for our testing. We used five miners. We used a Phoenix, NB miner, G miner, Team Red miner, and LOL miner. We tested on ETH hash for Ethereum. Raven, Kapow is the algorithm. We did Ergo, which is Auto Lycos. We did Beam, which is Beam Hash Hill, and Z Hash. Those were all the algorithms that we actually tested with on our stock settings. And then we are going to fine tune some of these in and see what our maximum are and our most efficient. All right, so now we're over here. Let's get ahead and start tuning this. I'm not gonna use MSI Afterburner to actually try to tune AMD. AMD, it's better to just go ahead and use the integrated AMD Radian software. I will, however, leave MSI Afterburner up and and running because I'm actually using my custom fan curve off of it and I don't want to set it inside of Radeon so let's do that you can right click or you can go into the system tray and go into your Radeon software all right here we are we're fully dialed in on Ethereum I've had this thing running for quite some time and I'm running an average around 32.9 on my most efficient on Phoenix on flex pool via windows and as you can see let's take a look at our temps and our power usage and our card is running at 44 degrees and a memory junction temperature of 66 and that is really solid so let's look at our overclock settings um, here is our overclock settings you click your performance tab your tuning 
you hit manual, and then you want to enable all of the pieces on the left, GPU tuning, advanced control enabled, and then you're gonna change your max frequency down to 1200. You wanna pull down your core voltage, MV voltage, all the way down to the left, it goes down to 762. You wanna enable the VRAM tuning, you wanna hit your memory timing and set it to fast timing that gives you just a slight extra bump and then you want to enable the advanced tuning there and then turn up the memory clear up to 2300 i push this thing and if i go over 2320 it will crash me out every time and as you can see the software is showing 62 watts pretty darn efficient on ethereum so let's keep going and I'm gonna try to trim this down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fine tune all these algorithms in. I'm gonna get you all the best numbers that I can with this specific card. And then I'll just show you all the nerdy numbers and we'll review them rather than watching me go through all this testing. Let's go ahead and time warp. All right, let's go over some of these nerdy numbers. The testing is done. All right, so here we are. We're over here looking at our nerdy numbers. The first thing it is the Sapphire Pulse 6600 XT. It is on driver 21.8.1. It cost me $394.16. And then the combo price was a $543.95 because I had to pick this up with a motherboard from Newegg. So first, let's start with ETH. And I ran ETH on four different miners. I used Phoenix, I used MB Miner, I used G Miner, I used Team Red Miner. They all had very similar results, but here are the exact numbers. The best that most people use is either Team Red Miner or some still try to use a Phoenix Miner or G Miner. And for Team Red Miner, the most efficient settings I had were 32.68 mega hash on 61 watts in the software, 104 watts at the wall. That is a pretty efficient little card there's where my settings are 1200 core 762 on the millivolt on the core voltage and 2300 on the memory and then of course out to the right i listed the temps and the memory junction temps on this card this card does not get hot running at full tilt on Ethereum and actually not on any of the algorithms I've tested. This is a super efficient low power card and it's really good for not heating up a space. So that's a huge benefit. So next for Raven, we did Kapow algorithm, Team Red Miner. We did 17.62 mega hash, 104 watts, 148 at the wall, 2500 core, 1000 for the voltage 2300 for the memory ergo team red miner again 61.8 mega hash 57 watts in the software 104 at the wall 1500 core 762 on your voltage 2200 on the memory and then we went ahead and we did beam and we did z hash on mb minor and lol minor respectively and before we get into the real world numbers, I wanted to just mention that Mad Electron Engineering and both Chump Change, they both used a quite different overclocks on Ethereum. They used a higher core at 1600, they pulled their voltage down to 700, and they had their MEM at 1150 with no power limit. And yet their results were very much the same. So that's just an interesting little side note. So let's go see what this makes in real world numbers. All right, so next we just took those numbers from a spreadsheet, we plugged them into one whattomon.com and we're going to hit calculate and we're going to see what exactly is the most profitable at a snapshot at this current time how much real world money can we make with this single gpu real world earnings of course our top earner is ethereum for three dollars and eight cents worth of ethereum per day before electric Electricity, and then of course ETH hash on nice hash at 289 kapow for Raven a dollar 94 per day and then nice hash kapow $1.74 a day ergo a dollar 15 per day and then Bitcoin gold it's not dead apparently a dollar a five per day so if we make three dollars and eight cents per day up here in the top corner I plug that in per day 
then our ROI on this specific card at $394.16 will be 128 days. And then if you equate the combo, which you should because you're paying for the combo and if you're not selling the other component, that's total cost in the GPU. So it would be 177 days. Of course, that's a snapshot of the earnings at this current time. And as cryptocurrency goes up and goes down, that fluctuates wildly. But as of 1021, it would take 177 days to pay this off if everything stayed exactly how it is right now. But really, it is an efficient card. It's hardly using any power. You're not running your power bill up like crazy. I'm actually gonna build out a rig of six of these. So thanks for coming along with me in the nerdy numbers. Let's go ahead and cut to the outro. <laughs> well, there you have it. The RX 6600 XT a Sapphire Pulse Edition. A beautiful card, super efficient, great hasher. Now, as long as you can get that at a good price point, a great mining product. If you're new to mining and you need some help, make sure to join Misfit Mining Discord or the Hash Raptor Discord. Plenty of seasoned vets in there are willing to help you out. If you like the video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride. Pew!